Hi everybody, welcome to CAFE, I'm Clarence Reynolds. And I'm Allison Godlove, great to be back with you to share all the fun and exciting events happening this week. So let's start off with Amy Sweezy, she is at the Orlando Science Center. Hey Amy. zone at the Orlando Science Center and yes these are the pulley chairs oh bet you can't guess why I'm trying to lift myself up here Ugh. I don't know if I can make it to the top hey Jeff how are you doing down there yeah, it's not happening uh -oh. uh, science uh -oh. is not my friend today <laughs> all right Jeff well how about you show me something else in the kinetic zone that sounds like a great idea all right I'll be right down all right, this is literally science in motion, Jeff. Tell me more about the Kinetic Zone. Kinetic Zone is all about physics. It's about engineering. It's about kinetic energy. Uh, all of Orlando Science Center is STEM, but what people kind of visualize when they talk about STEM is really right here in Kinetic Zone. Uh, all kinds of interesting opportunities like this Bernoulli table, Magic. which is using the power of air to levitate balls. We also have engineering challenges, which are challenging people to use their problem solving skills, their collaboration, their critical thinking, all those important STEM skills. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> this is uh, my revenge on the pulley chair. <laughs> right. Very cool. All right, so what else is in here? We've got some simulators. We've got these great engineering challenges where you can create contraptions that go down a zip line, we play around with plasma balls and some of those traditional science center things. So there are a lot of physical science activities in Kinetic Zone that will bring back memories of, of probably science centers and museum visits that you went as a kid or when your kids were younger. Right, and that's a good point too because the science center you always think about, it's families with kids. Parents bring their children here, but it's really for all ages, right? Yeah, there's no age limit on curiosity. So if you're interested in learning something new, come on down to Orlando Science Center. Also for adults specifically, we do Science Night Live, which is an adult night that happens five times a year. We're on a Saturday night. We open up the Science Center specifically for adults with guest speakers, cool activities, and all the Science Center, but no kids. All right, so you heard it right here. Bring your kids, don't bring your kids. It's all at the Orlando Science Center. Don't miss it. They are closed on Wednesdays during the school year, but open every other day of the week. Yes. Always something cool at the Science yeah, Center. Yeah, there definitely is. Thank you so much, Amy. The Orange County Sheriff's Office wants to award those who are helping to prevent crime in our community. It's now taking applications for the third annual Community Crime Prevention Awards Program. Awards range from $2,500 to $10,000 for nonprofit organizations, neighborhood groups, and others who are engaged in projects or programs that address neighborhood safety, crime prevention, or drug abuse education and prevention. So go to OCSO.com awards to apply through December 9th. Thousands of jobs will be showcased at the Central Florida Job Fair on November 2nd. Nearly 100 employers will have job openings in all kinds of industries from around the Central Florida region. The job fair is from noon until 4 at the Central Florida Fairgrounds Expo Hall. It's free. All job seekers are welcome, so if you're searching for your next job, this is an event you don't want to miss. You can learn more at cfec.org. On Friday, November 4th, you can go house hunting in the galleries at the Orlando Museum of Art to see how many homes you can find during Art Adventures. Home is where the heart is. Jennifer Bartlett's piece features 25 prints that showcase a variety of dots, squiggles, and shapes, and the kids are going to learn how to create a print using colorful inks, brayers, and styrofoam plates to design a series of houses that represent your home. Register at omart.org. You've got the golden ticket with this one. Enjoy the hit film Charlie and the Chocolate Factory at Independence Park on Friday, November 4th, and then Barber Park on the 5th. It's free, and the movie starts at 7 o'clock. The Orange County Parks and Recreation hosts these events each month. Food trucks will be on hand so you can grab a bite to eat as well. I had a chance to talk to Ocoee Commissioner George Oliver about the city's Unity Family Festival. Take a look.
A really special event is happening in the city of Ocoee, and Ocoee Commissioner George Oliver is here to tell us all about it. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So tell us about this Unity Family Festival. Well, actually, it's a festival that we, we're having for the very first time in the city. We've been, we've been celebrating or, or memorializing the Okoye Massacre for three years now. This is the first time we, we decided to do a celebration of life. That was at the, um, uh, at the request of the descendants. They, uh, they wanted to do more of an upbeat celebration of life type event, and uh, they reached out to the city to do that, and uh, we, we liked the idea, so we started to do a unity festival for the city. So it, it, it's, it's a festival for everyone. So what kinds of things will people see? Because Okoye was a really thriving community back in the early 1900s and still is today, yeah. but really had this, this massacre that, that changed everything. So what will people ex experience at the festival? One thing I have to say is that uh, when we talk about the Okoye massacre, it is not an easy conversation for most. Uh, when we talk about that, it's very um, unpleasant conversation. But once we get through that, and we start talking about where we are, uh, as opposed to where we where we've been and where we are. I think most folks kind of uh, let the guards down and they say, "Okay, wow, we've come a long way since then. So, uh, what can I do to get involved?" I I, I get that all the time. And uh, with this Unity Festival, what, it, what it's going to do is going to bring our communities together. We're, we're talking about the Asian community, the Latin community, the African American community, the Caucasian community. It brings us all together uh, as a unified community so that the other communities around us in Orange County can see that, hey, we have come a long ways. We're one of the most diverse cities in Central Florida right now, and we, in, we invite other uh, um, communities to come out and join us to be a part of this, this change. So is this a festival for that you can bring the whole family, for kids, for everybody? Is it just learning or are there going to be interactive things to do? Well, it, it, is, it, is, it is a family event. So you bring the kids out, you bring your, your lawn chairs, your blankets. Uh, you will have some entertainment. Uh, there will be a kid zone, uh, finger, there will be face painting, uh, bouncy houses for the kids. There will be food trucks uh, out there. Uh, we have entertainment. Uh, we're also invited uh, a lot of elected officials to come out to talk about the theme for this year is, is No Vote, No Voice. Because as we know, the Accord Massacre started as a result of, of a person trying to go out and vote and, uh, and then a massacre ensued after that. So what we've done is we've incorporated that uh, as a part of the educational component of the event and, and, and the, the theme of No Vote, No Voice. We will have uh, elected officials talking about that, the importance of not only registering to vote, but also getting out and voting. So as Okoe has gone from this massacre to what it is today, how do you feel that this festival really plays a part in bringing the community even closer together? I, I think that, that uh, that's a very good question because w when, we, uh, when we go out into the community and we talk about uh, where we are as a community and where we've come from, we find there's a lot of folks that never heard of the Okoye Massacre that lives in Okoye. Uh, we have a very young, um, uh, progressive uh, community out there that come from all over the country that lives in Okoye that never heard about it. So we educate them and, and what we get is we, we get this surprise look and say, okay, now, again, as I stated before, how do I get involved? So when we actually start bringing all those people together, we have a lot of folks from old Okoye, folks from new Okoye, and we're trying to get rid of that, that, that stigmatism of old and new because we all live in Okoye. So bringing the community together lets us know that we we are just one Okoye, and I've actually ad adopted that mantra myself, uh, the hashtag one Okoye. So now uh, this Union Festival plays into that mantra of one Okoye. So we come together as one community, and we thrive as one community. We move together as one community. So what is the date of the festival, the times, and where can people get more information? Well, the festival, you can actually find more information about the festival at okoyremembers.org. Uh, you can also go to the city's website, okoye.org, and uh, there is a uh, uh, a landing uh, uh, page there in, on our website. Uh, the Unity Festival is going to be uh, at uh, noon. It starts at noon on November 5th, Saturday, November 5th, at noon from uh, noon to 5. And we also have uh, about 250 Buffalo soldiers riding in uh, down the uh, um, July Perry Memorial Highway. Uh, and they will kick off the festival at noon. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for letting us know about the festival and take your family out. Enjoy and engage in our community.
The city of Ocoee will recognize and honor the victims of the 1920 Ocoee massacre with a Unity Family Festival on Saturday, November 5th at Bill Breeze Park and Ocoee Lakeshore Center. Bring your family for a day of remembrance and celebration of life, where there will be live music, food trucks, community vendors, and speakers. Now, this is a free event that runs from noon until 5 p.m., so go to ocoeeremembers.org to learn more. Osceola Arts presents The Tie That Binds works by Alberto Gomez through November 6th. He considers his work to be categorized as magical realism, which is a style that's a tradition in his Latin American homeland of Colombia. Gomez says his work depicts the combination of daily life and fantasy together in the story. His inspiration comes from his love of people and he seeks to portray the human story. Go to albertogomez.art to learn more about the artist. Film Slam takes place at the Orlando Museum of Art on November 6th, and this is a unique showcase event for local independent filmmakers and their audiences, which fosters community and promotes inclusivity, experimentation, and creativity. Film Slam takes place at 2 p.m., and each screening will run for about 60 minutes. The screenings will be followed by a live-streamed Q&A with the cast and crew of each film, and after every screening, filmmakers and cinephiles will gather to talk about the films that they just watched together, current projects, and more. Check out thefilmslam.org to learn more. Lots of cool events happening. It's Lots of visual art. Yes. Which is really great. Which is good going into the holiday season, yes. getting everybody ready. Very it's nice. Very nice. Well, that wraps up this week of events. And if you have an event that you'd like to share with us for next month, be sure to send us an email at cafe at ocfl.net. I'm Clarence Reynolds. And I'm Allison Godlove. Remember to join us next week to see what's new and exciting in your community.